Just a quick chat before the video starts. Just to let you know, we're going to be at Crick Boat Show this year. Yay! <laughs> we're going to be there on Saturday the 25th, Sunday the 26th of May. And on Saturday, we're going to be on the Haven Knox Johnston stand, as we were last year, meeting and greeting. And then at four o'clock on the Saturday, we're going to be in the Masterclass <laughs> Theatre doing a live Q&A session, which uh, is anything to go by the last time we did something like that. It was really uh, good fun, wasn't it? It was. So, and it's such a, a laugh. A first come, first serve basis, no tickets. So get there early if you want to get front row seats. Yep. Bring your questions along to yep. ask us. If you can't get there, you can send your questions to info at floatingourboat.com dot com. <laughs> and um, they will get read out and we'll answer them as best we can. Yeah. And on the Sunday, Francis, what are we doing? On the Sunday, we're going to be at the Elton Moss Boat Builder Stand in, is it in the Marina? In the Marina, yeah. Um, and we'll just be there probably for about 10 till 2, just as a meet and agree again. So yeah. if you're there on the Sunday and you want to come and say hello to us, come and find us. It'd be Indeed. good to talk to people. Absolutely. And uh, so that's Saturday the 25th, Sunday the 26th of May, Creek Boat Show. See you there. Today's journey sees us travel from Market Drayton in Shropshire through the beautiful setting of Turley Locks, six miles down to Knighton Woods in Staffordshire. Now you know why I'm wearing the oldest pair of trousers I've got. Bit of a fierce by wash coming through past this lock. It's renowned for being a nasty one, this, but uh, it doesn't look as bad as it has done in the past, I have to say. So let's see how Fran gets on. Well done. What a fabulous place to have a house. 
top of Turley Locks. Beautiful setting, beautiful garden. And apparently where that grey boat there is, True Grit, used to be a winding hole. But it's been roped across by the new owners of the house. Because I guess they wanted to put their boat there, so you can't turn there anymore. You'll have to go, I think it's about another mile up ahead where you can turn. But it's been a fabulous day. We're now filling up with water and uh, just another few miles cruise to get to where we want to be. Woodseed's cuttings was cut by hand out of the sandstone rock. It's almost a mile long and in places a hundred feet deep. And as you can see, landslides regularly occur, often causing the canal to be closed. And in this case, today as we're going through, the towpath has been closed for a considerable time. Well, we were hoping to get lunch at the Wharf Tavern, but they stopped serving food at two. Did Ringham say would be with you about quarter past, but still no. So that avenue of pleasure is closed to us. So we'll carry on cruising to where we want to be. Well, that's the cruising done for the day found a fabulous spot it is so peaceful really quiet and the engine's been going for about three four hours oh, on least. and off so yeah. it's so peaceful when it stops just one boat behind a few hundred yards back and it's so quiet we had a bit of trouble mooring up because we'd forgotten about well didn't forget but the, the shroppy shelf which is a concrete plinth 
runs all along the edge of here and you can't always get the boat in. The canal really needs dredging. It's quite shallow, isn't it? Yeah. So I think you had about seven attempts. I've been walking along with the stick <laughs> to test the depth of the water. Um, but eventually we found some mooring rings um, and amazingly nobody else here. Yeah, it's a wonderful spot. And it's right by the woods where three years ago we did our Dawn Chorus video. And uh, we're going to have a go at doing that in the next couple of days again. And it's strange because we had, we'd, we've planned to do this Dawn Chorus again and we'd planned to go to these woods. But until we were about a mile up the road, yeah. up the canal, we didn't realise it was the same ones same that we spot. did it. Yeah. <laughs> so, bizarre. But that's fine because it was really good. Yeah. Um, and it's just lovely. We've got bluebells everywhere. There's a hawthorn tree just above me here and it's buzzing with bees, isn't it? It is. It just, it is just idyllic, isn't it? If the police helicopters could stop going across, it would be even more idyllic. Well, you better start behaving yourself and then they won't follow you. <laughs> <laughs> right, time for a nice cool drink, I think. Yeah. We got any beer? Coke. Mm. There is a pub up the road. It's at least a mile walk, isn't uh, it? Coke, then. Coke. <laughs> I've just come out for a little bit of a walk to get my bearings and as you can see from behind we're joined by another boat. Hello to everybody aboard Cobweb, they're viewers of ours so we'll forgive them mooring up next to us. Who can blame them though, it's a fantastic spot and almost to the day two years ago we came here and were moored about half a mile behind and did our dawn chorus walk to those woods there, night and woods and we're going to do exactly the same tomorrow get up at silly o'clock and take a walk into the woods at dawn and listen to the birds awake. Really looking forward to it because we now know what to expect and it's an amazing experience, it really is. Anyway, I've got to get back to the boat. Fran's cooking pizza and I'm getting peckish. Just gone five o'clock in the morning. We've had a brisk short walk and the bird song has been going for about 15 minutes now. Wonderful, isn't it? It is. It actually started just before we left the boat. And I think last time we did this, the first bird was a blackbird. I think it was a thrush this time. Yeah. But it's the, the dominating sound is blackbird and thrush, isn't it? And then there's lots of little twitters, and I don't know what they all are. Wrens and robins. So we're just going to be quiet now and just soak it in. It's about 20 to 6. It's suddenly got a bit colder, hasn't it? I've often said that just before the sun, or just as the sun comes up, the temperature seems to really plummet. And we felt it this morning, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, absolutely. But what an experience. It, it just, having done it two years ago, we knew what to expect, and it's still surprising when you're in the midst of it all, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It just, it, you know, it wasn't easy getting up. This no. morning it was uh, Rich was almost should we go back to bed but yeah. um, we knew that we're moving to a different place tomorrow so we did come it is it isn't easy getting up but if you get the chance just do this because it yeah. is absolutely worth it isn't yeah, it yeah this is wonderful yeah 
and they've quietened down now. They've been at it for over half an hour, and it's gone a lot quieter than it was. Well, I think the, bird, the first bird sang as we left the boat, which was probably about quarter to five, wasn't it? Yeah. So I think it's gone for about an hour. And uh, we did take a walk further into the woods just to see if we can get a different sound. But there's full of bluebells down there, but it's a bit dark at the moment to film. So I'm waiting for the sun to pop up and we'll go down there and show the forest floor. As, as fantastic as the bird song has been, it's also been really, really good just to experience dawn, isn't it? In, yeah, in, it is amazing. Just to be here, and especially in a bit of woodland, as the sun has come up or as the light has come up, and you see the colours begin to pop, the bluebells suddenly appeared. We couldn't even see them. Um, we could do that any time of year. We haven't got to get up at stupid o'clock to do that. We should experience dawn in the middle of winter when we can lay in bed till 7 o'clock and do it. <laughs> Should we get your joke out of the way? Well, it's a, an observation really because um, people pay quite a lot of money to go and do forest bathing so I figure that's having a forest bath so maybe we've just had a bird bath Boom boom Tweet tweet <laughs> Well we thoroughly enjoyed this we're going to go and find a tree for Fran to hug Two years ago, there was a picture of me hugging a tree at the end of the video, so it's your turn now. Well, you think you found the same tree yeah. um, just around the corner, so I've just worked out it will be um, two centimetres bigger this year than it was last time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going to go and hug it. <laughs> yeah, and interestingly enough, was, I said that we're now hearing the grandchildren of the birds we heard two years ago. Yeah, probably. Some of yeah. them are still alive, I guess, you know, but... Uh, and as we came into the woods, and it was really almost completely dark, then an owl flew overhead, didn't it? Mm. Really close Big overhead. Owl, yeah. Uh. Anyway, that's us. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and all that malarkey. And go and listen to the birds. See you next time. Bye. We have tasted this and it is nice and it is sweet. This is the first time on porridge. So uh, see how that goes. I've got a right old dollop of porridge here, <laughs> but I deserve it since we've been up since quarter past four this morning, bird watching, listening. We've had a lot of comments about how much sugar is in that recipe, haven't we? But mm. it's you've had about two teaspoons on there, so. That's only about one teaspoon of sugar. That is good. I mean, it's not honey and it's not syrup, but it's really floral flavour. It's really nice. Well, it's got the pollen and the nectar from the dandelions in it, hasn't it's, it? So. It's really good. Right. Anyway, I'm going to get stuck into mine now. Mm -hmm.